Now, in terms of sprints, there are a couple of races that stood out to me. I think women's 100, men's 200. Robert, you said that you think this is Shelly Ann Fra Fraser Price's best race ever. That is a flaming hot take. Can you please back it up? Yeah, well, I've got the stats to back it up. Um, look, she it definitely was, and I think you'll agree with me on this, John. She closed out the greatest women's 100 season in history. Yeah, and she, she won ran, the race in 10.65 seconds into a point zero point eight headwind, just for the record. That was the result. She won this clearly. Sharika Jackson was second, 10.81. No doubt who the best woman in the world was today. I mean, look how far ahead she was. Second place, 10.81. Third place, 10.91. So she's destroying third place by more than a quarter of a second. It was super, super impressive. This is a record seventh sub-10 showing. So coming into the year, only 13 times, I think, Actually, less because she did seven this year. Like, yeah. Well, I think I think coming in the only thirteen women had ever, thirteen times. It's ten seven never been broken. She did it seven times because right now there's twenty times it's been done. She has seven of them this year. The most anyone had ever done it once in a year was Elaine Thompson Harrow did it four times last year. Flojo did it three times. But in terms of why this is her best race, I mean, just just look at the um. All you got to do is look up her other factor in the wind here. Like look at her other 10, six this year, everything else was run with a tailwind except for one race that was run at altitude. So sorry, it's just taking me a second here to pull this up. But so Kip Cano classic, that was 10, six, seven. So that's at altitude and it's, it's a less win than this. It's, it's a negative 0.4, but her other 10, six, seven with a positive 0.5, 10, six, six, positive 0.5, 10, six, seven, positive 0.8. 10.67, positive 1.3. Um, you know, even at Worlds, it was 10.67, positive 0.8. 10.62, positive 0.4. And then 10.74 in Brussels when she got beat. And then today. So this was just use the wind altitude conversion. This converts to a 10.61 with zero wind. Nothing else in her performance this year results to, to a 10.61 with zero wind. And what's interesting is if you give her the 2.0 legal tailwind, this jumps down to 2.10. 0 0.50. So if she had a 2.0 tailwind, theoretically she would have run 10.5 today. Not 10.59, 10.50. So I think she's in amazing form. And I really, I, I don't know if something can be set up or if she'd be interested in this go, in Jamaica or something. Mexico City, baby. What have we been saying for the last few weeks? Just even if she doesn't get the world record, just to get the 10.5. She really wants to see that. She's getting older. We don't know what's going to be next year. The, the, there was an article in the Jamaican paper. I don't think we put this up on the homepage, but said she was originally going to decline this meet and said she wasn't coming because she wanted to see her son's first day of school. But then something happened with his school schedule and it was changed. So she decided to come to the meet. So she's in uh, amazing form to be running this well. You know, I think she really wanted that 10 five. She ran through the line and just these headwinds. I think there were some amazing performances today and these headwinds sort of dampen these times him, Grant, her, Grant Holloway, as well as uh, Noah Lyles, I think all ran pretty good races. But when you're running into a headwind instead of a tailwind, you know the time's not as quite as impressive as, you, as it normally would be. You know, Robert, can we get? Do we know was her son's first day of school delayed because she so she could run the Diamond League final? I want to know this because she is like a national hero. There, I could see them doing that. I think that would be crazy. Yeah, John, I just wanted to extend it. Send a big thank you to Jamaica, the education department there in the school for postponing. <laughs> because honestly, I heard something. Someone was talking about their kid's school, and they're like, I heard the amusement park lobby in some state, you know, push to have schools in certain states start after Labor Day so the amusement parks could stay open later. And I'm like, if the Jamaicans push back school so she could run this mate, God bless them. Well, we, need, we need more of that. We need more well, of that. I didn't want to pay for the Jamaican Gleaner article that had the details, but all in the game on on YouTube says that they did change the school so she could co compete. I mean, it's probably pre-K or kindergarten. The kid's young. So, you know, let, let mom get an extra 30 grand, you know, maybe give the school 10, 10 of it just for the extra and, delay or two. Yeah. And also like with everybody skipping the diamond league. Okay. I know Sydney McLaughlin makes millions, but and I think you can get appearance fees too, right? But track and field athletes compared to other athletes don't get paid that much. You think some of them, 
even if they usually get appearance fees and like, well, I'm not going to give you the big appearance fee. I want you to come for the 30 grand. You think 30 grand might be worth it for some of these guys. They're not going to be around that long. I don't know. You're a Michael Norman. What are you getting paid? I'm with you, Walden. I, I think that's a pretty nice carrot, but Th- thirty grand still enough. thirty grand. You know, even if he's making, I really doubt he's making seven figures, but mid sixes, still yeah. third thirty grand. Like it's not like it's some NFL guy who's making two million or five million and thirty grand. It's like uh, I'd rather stay at home and you know watch YouTube or something. And but, Robert, just to follow up, or Walden, were you going to finish point here? Go ahead. Yeah, to f- follow up on Robert's point about this being the best run of Shelly Ann's career, I do agree with you because of the data you cited. The previous best was that 10.62 in Monaco. That was a plus point, 0.4 win. That adjusts to 10.64. So 10.61, that's three hundredths of a second faster. The only adjusted times in history faster, and this is according to Track and Field News, are Flojo's 10.49. Now, I think we can all just throw that out because of the wind. Uh, because there was definitely not a zero zero win, and you're not going to adjust that correctly. The other two that, times that are faster in history, performances. Elaine Thompson Hurrah in Tokyo last year, she ran 10.61. That was into a negative 0.6. So that adjusts to 10.57. And then Thompson Hurrah at the pre classic last year when she ran 10.54, that was with a 0.9 tailwind. That adjusts to 10.60. So those two runs by Thompson Hurrah last year are the only ones, one adjusted for weather and altitude that are better than what we saw today from Shelly Ann Fraser-Price. John, is Paul Doyle her agent? He is, yes. Okay, we got to, shit, get the texting out. Does anyone know if there's still a good track in Mexico City? We got to get this down on now. It's got to be like next week. The kids, school's got to be delayed another week. How do we know that's going to be next year? Seriously, we should have been planning this. We'll crowdfund like a million bucks. We always Paul, say that, but if we say, Paul, if we reach out to Paul today and say, Paul, one billion dollars by next Sunday, can it happen? Well, yeah. If you raise a million dollars, then you have to. That's like a movie script. That we have to raise a million dollars to see if she can break the world record. I, I this, this will be a question. Good our ability to do that. Ours? No. Are there like the blockchain supposed to be the next thing? They need like contingent crowdfunding. And so it's on the blockchain and then it's all there and none of the credit card things go through, but somehow we know it's going to go through and we say, we'll charge your card if we raise the million. Otherwise we don't. Isn't that, well, that's just like crowdfunding plus, plus, on their websites that already exist for that. I don't think I know. they involve the blockchain or anything like no, that. No, you got to get the blockchain just for funding. Some VCs just throw some money, waste some advertising. Those Vandal, my- you could be the special sponsor or Hey, DraftKings. I'm and not going to say start, which one I like better. I can start my Sprint website when I start my GoFundMe fundraiser for it. Plus, Paul Dillow owes us because the Grand Hallway exhibition race, I mean, Devin Allen exhibition race never took place in Eugene. So we can also fly in Devin Allen from the Philadelphia Eagles practice squad for this. But well, one final thing on this race, because it also shows how close these people are. But if I, I put up this graphic just to finish overhead shot of the woman's hundred meter finish. I mean, I guess we could do the math here, but she won by 0.16. It's not that many meters. I mean, like watching, I guess someone could do the math, right? You win by maybe like two meters. And it's just, I don't know. It's amazingly Shakari Richardson dead last in this one, but she's probably five, six meters back. I don't know. I'll have to figure out the math on that one. But the other, uh, should we move on from this race? 